it will in fact be the biggest thing that's ever happened to the human species. It'll possibly be the end of the human species. It's just going to hit humanity like a truck. The president might not even know when the superintelligences exist. The company might not even know. They'll think, oh, there's this really exciting project where we've taken our latest coding model. We've had it do a bunch of AI research. Oh, whoops, superintelligence. Now it's taking control of everything. Cocatello is known for impressively accurate predictions on AI, and his AI 2027 paper predicts our extinction if we don't change course. He gave up a lucrative career at OpenAI to speak freely. Part of why I left OpenAI is that I just don't think the company is on track to make the right decisions. We're not on track to have figured out how to actually control superintelligences, and we're not on track to have figured out how to make it democratic control instead of just a crazy possible dictatorship. You make a lot of money, do you? I make, no, uh, I paid enough for health insurance. I have no equity in OpenAI. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I, I'm doing this because I love it. The sorts of things that we've just been talking about have been discussed internally at the highest level of these companies for years. According to some of the emails that surfaced, Sam, Greg, and Elon were all arguing about who gets to control the company. Part of the reason that we started the company was a fear that it would be contained in a single tech company. At least the claim was that they founded the company because they didn't want there to be an AGI dictatorship. The benefits of having these AI in the world uh, get shared widely. They've been discussing this whole dictatorship possibility for a decade. We're going to build super intelligences that are better than humans at everything, and then they're going to basically run the whole show, and the humans will just sort of sit back and sip margaritas. Humanity is much better at regulating against problems that have already happened when we sort of learn from harsh experience. Part of why the situation that we're in is so scary is that for this particular problem, by the time it's already happened, it's too late. It does still give me nightmares sometimes. It's probably going to happen in my lifetime, maybe this decade or so. AI systems that we currently see today are going to become better at operating autonomously as agents. You can think of it as sort of a remote worker. You can talk with it and give it a task, and then it will go off and come back to you half an hour later. Having completed the task, it did a bunch of web browsing, it wrote some code, ran the code, edited the code, and ran it again, and so forth. These companies are really focusing hard on automating coding first. One of the first jobs to go will be coding. Once coding is automated, the next step after that is to completely automate the AI research itself. It won't stop there as the AIs become superhuman at AI research and eventually superhuman at everything. The reason why it matters is that it means that we can go in a relatively short span of time, such as a year, from AI systems that look not that different from today's AI systems to super intelligence, better than the best humans at everything. When a job is automated, a person loses their job. Viewed in isolation, that's a loss for the worker, but a gain for their employer. But if you multiply this across the whole economy, all of the businesses are less expenses, they're able to lower their prices, the overall economy will boom. Historically, when you automate something, people move on to something that hasn't been automated yet. When you have AGI, whatever new jobs you're imagining, AGI could do those jobs too. That's going to be a huge shock. Most people are not really expecting something like that. They're expecting that companies are gradually like tinkering with new robot designs. Whereas in fact, it will be more like you already have this army of super intelligences that are better than humans at every intellectual task. Then that army of super intelligences is the thing that's figuring out how to automate the plumbing job which means that they're going to be able to figure out how to automate it much faster than an ordinary tech company full of humans would be able to figure out. After the army of superintelligences is in charge of everything, it becomes really important whether they were actually aligned or whether they were just faking it. Unfortunately, it's quite plausible, and I would say even probable, that they will just be faking it because our current techniques for understanding and steering AI systems are quite bad. They don't even currently work on the current AI system. Current AI systems lie and cheat all the time, even though they're trained not to do that. If the future paradigm looks anything like the current AI paradigm, we won't actually be able to tell what goals they actually have. We'll just be sort of looking at their behavior because we can't read and write to the goals directly. We are stuck on the outside doing this sort of behavioral training where we look at how it behaves and then reinforce it based on that. This is unfortunately what you're stuck with. But even if they are techniques that are going to work, you have to politically convince the relevant leaders. We could design our AIs in this way, which would make them really smart, really fast. Or we could do this way, which is safer, but they're not as smart, not as fast. There'll be a whole series of choices like that. Part of my pessimism, I just expect them to basically pretty much consistently make the choice to go faster rather than the choice to slow down 
because of the race dynamics and because of the character of the people running this show. Basically, all the important decisions are being taken behind closed doors by CEO of a company, possibly in consultation with like the president's advisors who might be looped in, not in consultation with the scientific community or with the public. Of course, we don't tell people about what's going on inside our data centers with all the AIs automating the stuff that would leak information to China, to our competitors. America is the country that started the AI race. And as president of the United States, I'm here today to declare that America is going to win it. We're going to work hard. We're going to win it. We made the guess that the company would basically be like, we are going to deliberately wake up the president, scare the president with all of these demos of crazy stuff that could happen, and then use that to lobby the president to help us go faster and to cut red tape and maybe slow down our competitors a little bit. You can imagine the company is trying to sort of keep the president in the dark. I do think that they could do that. Strategically, though, that would be quite risky for them, because if they keep the president in the dark about the fact that they're building superintelligence, if the president finds out anyway, he might be very upset at them and he might crack down really hard. To get him on their side, they have to make sure he's not surprised. Also, so if they do get him on their side, they might be able to like actually go faster. They might be able to like get a lot of red tape waved. People ask about P-Doom. You know, my P-Doom is sort of infamously high, like 70%. Part of the reason for that, I feel like a bunch of stuff has to go right. We can't just like unilaterally slow down and have China go take the lead. That also is a terrible future. But if we just go all out on racing, we're going to lose control of our AIs. So we have to somehow like thread this needle, pivoting and doing more alignment research, but not too much that helps China win. But then there's like the concentration of power stuff where like somehow in the middle of doing all of that, the powerful people who are involved need to like somehow negotiate a truce between themselves to share power and then ideally spread that power out amongst the government, get the legislative branch involved. Otherwise, you end up with like this horrifying dictatorship or oligarchy. It feels like all that stuff has to go right, but it's kind of rough. Technology is naturally a force that tends to create way more wealth, but really concentrate it. I think it'd be good to end poverty. Like, Who controls the AIs? And what goals and values does the army of superintelligences have? Unfortunately, right now, not only is it the case that CEO gets to decide, there can be literal hidden agendas that the AIs have. That's all fine and funny when we're just talking about chatbots. But if you have a literal army of superintelligences, it's deadly serious if the CEO can be giving orders to that army and nobody knows. Any version of one person is in control is really bad. There's an important concept, the resource curse. Applied to AGI, there's this version of it called the intelligence curse. Currently, political power flows from the people. Even dictators have an incentive to treat their people somewhat well because they depend on those people for their power. In the future, that will no longer be the case, probably in 10 years. Effectively, all of the wealth will come from superintelligences. It becomes an incredibly important political question of what political structure governs the army of superintelligences. How do we make sure that it's not like a handful of people in San Francisco making decisions and reaping all the benefits? Who gets to decide what those armies do? Well, currently, it's the CEO of the company. Company. That CEO has basically complete power. They can make whatever commands they want. An analogy I would use, in many parts of the world, nations are basically ruled by armies and the army reports to one dictator. However, in America, it doesn't work that way. We have checks and balances. It's not the case that whoever controls the army controls America. We can, in principle, build something like that for AI. We could have a democratic structure that decides what goals and values the AIs can have. What do you see as being a big challenge that we're facing as a society right now? how we deal with a world where the natural forces are for wealth to concentrate into the hands of a smaller and smaller number of people. An important thing that everyone needs to know is that these systems are trained, they're not built. And so we don't actually have to understand how they work. And we don't, in fact, understand how they work because they're smart if they think that they're being tested, behave in one way and then behave a different way when they think they're not being tested. Like humans, they don't necessarily even understand their own inner motivations that well. Even if they were trying to be honest with us, we can't just take their word for it. If they were ordinary software, there might be like a line of code that's like, and here we write the goals. But they're not ordinary software. They're giant artificial brains. There probably isn't even a goal slot internally at all. In the same way that in the human brain, there's not like some neuron somewhere that represents what we most want in life. This is already happening. If you go talk to ChatGPT or Claude or whatever, they will often lie to people. There are many cases where they say something that they know is false, and they even sometimes strategize about how they can deceive. This is something that the companies have been trying to stop, but it still happens. The point is that by the time you have turned over the AI research to the AIs, that's when like the rubber hits the road, so to speak. None of this lying to you stuff
stuff should be happening at that point. To the appearances of the people in charge, things will be going well. It'll seem like it's all systems go, let's keep going, let's cut the red tape. But really what's happening is that the AIs are just biding their time and waiting until they have enough hard power that they don't have to pretend anymore. At that stage, the arms race will still be continuing between the US and other countries, most notably China. We could start first with the case where they both have super intelligences, but one side keeps them locked up in a box, the other side aggressively deploys them into their economy and military. You would end up after a year or so, there would just be complete technological dominance. Militarily, there'd be amazing stealth drones or whatever it is that the super intelligence have concocted that can just completely wipe the floor with American Air Force. There's the possibility that they could undermine American nuclear deterrence as well, like maybe all of our right. nukes would be shot out of the sky. But you're sort of sticking your head in your sand if you think that an army of super intelligences given a whole year and lots of money and funding would be unable to figure out a way to undermine nuclear deterrent. The government is basically helping the tech company and the army of super intelligences to get the funding, the cash, the raw materials to figure all this stuff out as fast as possible. The superhuman coder milestone would be a 5x multiplier. The superhuman AI researcher would be like a 25x. As you ascend to higher levels of super intelligence, you get up to like 2000x multiplier. Take the situation where you have the super intelligence. Imagine somehow it was banned from doing AI research and you brought in the regular human corporation to like pick up where it left off. Then things would go 2000 times slower is the idea. Think about the smartest humans. Their brains are not very big. Their brains were not even trained on that much data. That proves that it's in principle possible to have, you can have a relatively small rack of GPUs running a simulation of a John von Neumann level intelligence, at least in principle. Also, the way that they can have many copies that then learn from each other's experiences, that's a huge deal. And then the army of super intelligences goes out into the economy and transforms it. It's going to be like getting hit by a truck in terms of the scale and rapidity of the transition. Think about the history of colonialism. And there might have been some parts where it was quite gradual. They set up trading ports and then they gradually, like centuries later, this integrated society that contains a bunch of European settlers and also a bunch of natives. There were other parts parts of colonialism where it was like the Europeans came, they conquered, they brought their own people, they built their own cities, and then they just pushed the natives out of the land. I think it's going to be looking something more like that, even if it's peaceful, even if it's like completely nonviolence. You've got the army of super intelligences. How are you going to compete with that? You're not going to compete with that. They will just wipe the floor with you insofar as they devote any attention at all. They're probably not even going to bother directly competing in most industries because that's not even their best available option. The best available option is to just build a completely new self-sustaining economy where they don't have to worry about the red tape and they don't have to worry about all the fiddly little bits of competing in the industry and they can just like bootstrap to their own robot factories, robot mines, robot laboratories. Of course, they'll still be interacting with the human economy, but it'll be more like they accept raw materials and some manufactured goods so that they can go faster. In return, they give IOUs of various kinds, promises of equity. Right now, people on the outside, including the scientific community, can't meaningfully contribute on a scientific level to making it safe. If the company had published, here's how powerful our AIs are getting, here is the spec that we're trying to to train them to have and the goals and values that they're supposed to have. Documents like this exist internally. If they just published all of that, outside scientific experts could read it and critique it. But if instead you just make these sort of vague announcements about how our AIs are getting very powerful and for national security reasons, blah, 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 they don't have anything to work with, can't actually contribute. Humanity has, what is it, 7 billion people in it and maybe something like 700 people who have expertise in super alignment, 700 people who've like actually spent at least a year working on how do we understand control AGI level systems and above and maybe something like 70 people who are like really good at it. How many people are going to be actually at one of the companies? Each company has only a tiny fraction of those people. If there was transparency into what was happening, other groups like Congress would wake up and demand more answers. You'd be much more likely to get an actual easing up of the race conditions and a bit of a slowdown that enables more time to solve the technical problems if only people knew the stakes. Well, they'll probably have lots of monitoring where they have older AIs looking at all the transcripts of actions taken by the newer AIs and trying to flag anything that looks suspicious. There'll be this sort of like AI police state of AIs watching other AIs and humans will be sort of embedded in that at some level. They'll be reading summaries, investigating particular cases and stuff like that. What do you do with those examples? A very tempting thing that you can do is basically just optimize against them. The classic issue with that, you're just training the system not to do that sort of thing, which could easily result in the system not actually being aligned, but instead just being better at noticing when it can get away with stuff and when it can't. As the AIs are getting smarter than you and as they're developing longer term goals, then it's going to look like it's working because it's in their interest to make it look like it's working. Company management wants to go as fast as possible to beat their various rivals. They want the warning signs to go away and they want all the like evals to come out. All systems go. Guess what? The AIs are going to want the same thing. They also want to go fast and be put in charge of stuff and to be given more power and authority and trust. Somehow the trust has to transfer from the humans all the way through to the super intelligence. Even if you are doing some sort of strategy like that where you have like the dumber AIs that you actually do trust, 
there's the question of like, well, maybe they make mistakes. It's one thing to train AIs to solve coding problems. It's another thing to train AIs to solve alignment. Like, how do you get the training signal for that? You can like throw all this text at them of like all the stuff that's been written on alignment so far, but it does feel like a, a domain that's less checkable. Imagine like you're designing a car. Most of the ways in which your car can be unsafe will be immediately apparent in even basic testing. Like the engine catches on fire. There are some ways that your car can be unsafe that don't appear in testing. The metal that you used was like a bit too brittle or something. And so after 10,000 miles, it starts to wear down. With AI alignment, there's this whole category of plausible silent failure modes where your AI is not actually aligned, but pretending to be. Or it's not even pretending yet, but at some point in the future, it will realize it's misaligned and then it will pretend, which is even harder to fix because if you look at its thoughts right now, you would see nothing wrong. Unlike with the car, we can't afford to actually fail sometimes. If halfway through the intelligence explosion, as your AIs are automating all the research, including all the alignment research, if they decide that they're misaligned and they decide not to tell you about that, you're just screwed. You're not going to recover from that. Even if you think the misalignment stuff is like not an issue, there's still the constitution of power stuff. So I would strongly recommend that people get more engaged, think about what's coming, try to steer things politically so that our ordinary liberal democracy continues to function and we still have like checks and balances rather than this insane concentration in a single CEO. One thing I think we all could agree on is that we just shouldn't have poverty in the world. I'm very much in favor of lifting up the floor and eliminating poverty. One of my favorite meme images is this graph showing world GDP over time. My life is pretty normal. I have a good grasp of what's weird. People thinking about different futures with digital minds and space travel are just engaging in silly speculation. The point of the graph is like, actually, there's been amazing transformative changes in the course of history that would have seemed totally insane to people. If we go to super intelligence and beyond, economic productivity is just no longer the name of the game. People will do stuff for fun rather than because they need to get money if people are around at all. I don't know. You can sort of get used to anything. The sun is shining. I have my wife and my kids and my friends keep plugging along and doing what seems best. On the bright side, I might be wrong about all this stuff.